there are so many things that you need to do when you start a virtual assistant business. It is overwhelming. If you aren't sure what to do first, then start with your virtual assistant website. Hey mom, so welcome to the Life Unboxed podcast where we talk about all things mompreneur, from raising your kids to running a business and the most important one, keeping your sanity. I am Jody the mom, a successful virtual assistant and homeschool mom of six for almost 10 years. So my goal with all of this is to give you as much help as possible so that you can confidently start a business grow your business, and homeschool your kids. So be sure to visit lifeunbox.blog and download your free Mom Boss 2.0 workbook. If you like to be a rebel mom and break all the rules, then this is for you. And remember, you can support the show with coffee, and I greatly appreciate your support. Visit Kofi, that's K-O hyphen F-I dot com forward slash lifeunboxedblog and buy this mom some coffee. Okay, so let's get into this week's topic. I know, between figuring out how to get clients, figuring out your services you want to offer, and wondering if this virtual assistant thing will actually work, planning your virtual assistant website may not be at the top of your list. So before we get any further, I don't want to keep saying links below, links below. So I'm just going to say it this one time, links below. I have tons of resources for you when it comes to starting a virtual assistant business. So be sure to check those out. All right. Figuring out how to create a website is a big investment of time and money. And you might be thinking, well, I'll just create a social media page or I will just do this. I don't have the time to do that, to create my own website. But if you are serious about your business, then the time and money you invest will be worth it. And I'm not the only one that says that, just so you know. And yes, you can do it yourself, even if you are just a beginner. Once again, tons of resources. So why you should create a virtual assistant website. Okay, so the number one reason you should create a website is that 84% of consumers think a business is more credible if it has a website. That is a very high percentage. So a virtual assistant website increases the likelihood that a client will find you through a search engine. And you can really showcase your awesomeness on your website. It also makes it easier for a potential client to contact you. Okay, if you're new to the channel, I am all about practicality. I don't want to just throw an idea out you and then wave bye-bye and be like, go figure it out on your own. So this is one of those shows where I'm going to get incredibly practical with you. And that's why there's so many resources that I'm going to leave down in the descriptions below, whether you're watching this or listening to this, wherever you listen to your podcast. And I want to actually tell you how to do it. I want you to walk away with actionable steps on what to do next on how to build your virtual assistant website. So let's get back into the show. That was free for all my listeners. That was free. So creating a website uh, should also be one of the first things you do to actually launch your business because you can do virtual launches, but you if you don't have anything to virtually launched, then you can't really do that. So, and it actually gives you more reach when you launch. Anyway, so when you are ready to launch, you have something to show everyone. And it is a great way for friends to share and spread the word too. It makes it easy for people you know to tell other people about you. So make things easy for people. That is the rule of thumb when it comes to business. That should be like in your top five rules. And as I go along, I may make up some more. But um, <laughs> that should be in your top five rules is make it easy for people to get in touch with you, to find you, and to share you. <laughs> and we're going to have some coffee. This is why I appreciate all my supporters. <sighs> 
Okay, so before we get into what you actually need on your virtual assistant website, there are a few things to keep in mind. So let's talk about free websites versus purchasing your domain and hosting. I know, it is so tempting. They're free. There are a number of places that you can go to get a free domain. And usually it looks like this. Your domain dot hostname dot com. So it looks really cumbersome. And you you aren't actually getting your own domain. Your website is a subdomain of the main hosting site. There are a number of reasons that this is not a good idea, especially if you're wanting to look like a serious virtual assistant business. Number one, you don't own your website. If you aren't the owner of the domain or the hosting, then you don't own it. Your host owns it. That means they can do anything they want with it. So keep in mind like what we've seen in recent years when it comes to social media platforms and people getting kicked out, accounts um, getting closed, et cetera, et cetera. It is not far-fetched to think that a uh, hosting company can do the same thing to your website. So you don't own it. They own it. They can do whatever they want. Number two, you're not easily found. So these websites that are free don't usually come up in a search. And it is really hard to remember your domain dot hostname dot com. So if a potential client is looking, uh, is going to go looking for your website, they need to spell everything exactly as it is. And yeah, I can't even get websites spelled correctly all the time. So this adds more barriers for your clients to overcome. If there are too many obstacles in the way, people will naturally stop trying. And if you can get them to try after like one time something doesn't work, they're pretty committed to finding you. But I think you're pushing it if you need they have to try three times. So what is one of our top five rules when it comes to business? Lower the barriers that it takes to get to you. Number three, limitations to what you can do. Yes, there will be terms of service that you need to follow. You will also be limited to what you can design because usually there are packaged kind of layouts and setups. And so you're kind of stuck with what they can offer. There are some that offer more flexibility, but for the most part, you're kind of stuck with, you know, their five choices of web design that you can um, put on your website. So what is the solution to all of this? It's obvious at this point, get your own hosting. So I use Bluehost, again, link in the description below, and I have for years. Um, there's also SiteGround, which offers like faster servers and all that kind of stuff. And I do talk more in depth about hosting in another show. And again, I know I said I wouldn't keep mentioning it, but it's kind of germane to the topic at hand. So I do talk more in depth about different hosting. The next thing you also want to purchase is a premium theme for your WordPress site. So I do use Divi by Elegant Themes. And it gives you the freedom of design, but the ease to start. And I'm so confident in your ability to design a website if you're a beginner that I take you step by step through the process. And part of the reason I'm so confident is because that's how I started. So years later, I am now teaching you how to design a website so you can do it. Yes, there's a learning curve. Yes, you have to invest time and money. Yes, that is one thing one purchase I have no regrets making. So since we're talking about domains and this is um, a very practical show, I want to talk about, about the mistake you need to avoid when you pick your domain. So I was talking with a friend about his website um, that he wanted to create and we were chatting about some of the first steps to take. So I asked him this question. So what do you want to name your website? Have you thought about that? And he replied, I was just going to use my name. I paused and I looked at him 
And I said, so how many people misspell your name? And he said, everyone. So at this point, we came up with a number of alternatives that sounded good, were easily spelled, and available. So domain names must be entered correctly in order to get to the website. There isn't a close enough or almost got it. The name needs to be exact. I know this is very basic, especially since we've been using the internet for years now, but I see this mistake so often that I need to say something. Make sure your name can be spelled easily. If people can't spell it or easily remember it, then they will never find you. Lower the barrier to get to you by picking a name that is easy to remember and spell. So there was another acquaintance, him and his brother had started a website as well, and they picked some incredibly obscure word from one of the Indian languages. I don't remember which one it was. And so it wasn't um, an English word at all, and I could never remember it. And they talked about everything, you know, what it meant and had, you know, this deep meaning to it, but it wasn't hard to spell. It was hard to spell and it was not easy to remember. I don't think they have their website anymore or their business. Just keep that in mind. Remember, we are lowering the barriers for people to get to you. And now you might be asking yourself, okay, well, if I build my own website and I do all this. What about virtual assistant website SEO? You don't need to learn everything about SEO. I know SEO can seem like a really scary term, but it really isn't. There are simple things you can do for your virtual assistant website SEO. Um, and again, show in this, I have another post. Of course, I tell you how to... I, talk about stupid, simple SEO. Okay. So yes, there's another show for that and post and podcast. Um, but SEO is one of those skills that you can quickly learn the basics of to really get started. And it can be stupid, simple. And so I get you started. So go check that out. Okay. So now let's get into what do you actually need on your virtual assistant website? There are some basics that you want to include on your site, whether you have it all on one page or multiple pages. So my virtual assistant website is jodyrperry.com and it includes five pages. It has everything that anyone needs to know about working with me. And I've read a lot of business books over the years, like, like a lot. And I like research. Um, So reading many books is really my happy place. And it gives me the feeling of accomplishing something without actually putting myself out there. So researching and reading is like really good for me. Um, But yes, I, you know, I am working on this uh, because I can't just stay in my little cocoon, my little bubble of knowledge, even though that's my happy place. So the best marketing book I read was Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller. And I would highly recommend this if you need greater clarity on your messaging. So let's get into what you need on your website. Number one, services you offer. Yes, this is number one because you want your potential client to see what you offer as soon as they land on the page. This is not a list of everything you offer, but a simple one-line statement. For example, my statement is tailored web design and bookkeeping solutions for your small business. So it tells you what services I provide and who I provide them for. Number two, how to connect. You want to make this process as easy as possible because again, we're lowering the barriers to get in touch with you. If it's hard to connect with you, then you've lost your client. Put a contact form on every page and then have a separate page with a contact form. Yes, you need this on every single page because you don't know which page is going to resonate with your potential client. 
So you don't know where they're going to actually say, hey, I think I want to work with this person. And they're going to want to easily be able to connect with you. Because that is the goal. Make it easy to connect with you. Number three, put in there the next steps after they contact you. Let your client know the process after they submit the form. So it can be as simple as connect, plan, build, or connect, discovery call, launch. Think through the three steps to start working for you. Clients will want to know what happens next. Will it be an email or a phone call? Then what happens after the second contact? You don't need to explain everything in detail, but simply show them the process. Who do you work with? This is a big one. I'm going to tell you a story. So I did get a contact form through my website uh, a few months back. And clearly this person saw a virtual assistant, my location, and was like, okay, I'm just going to put in a contact form. They didn't look at my prices. They didn't look at the services they offer. And so they submitted this form. And I responded because like, well, let me see, you know, and ask for more details. The rate they were offering was half of my starting fee. And it was requiring things that I would never do, like drive around the city and different things like that. So even though they may not read it, you still want to put who you work with. (laughs) And you want your ideal client to jump at the chance to work with you. Do you want to work with small businesses, mom entrepreneurs, startups, medium to large businesses? Clearly state who you want to work with. Prices. So there are two thoughts that I've seen on this topic. Post your prices or don't post your prices. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of don't post them. For one, I want to know if I can afford you or not. So if I have to search or continually scroll for the price, like you've just lost me. I want you to be upfront. I want to know you're not salesy and be direct. Now, again, uh, depending on the services that you offer, it can be difficult to post specific prices. So I post a range for what I charge because again, I'm more of a generalist. So it's better to just kind of leave a range and then I can be more specific with a proposal. But the thing is, everyone at least knows my starting rate. Like if they're not even in the ballpark with my start or they're going to offer me half of my starting rate, like, no, you at least know where you need to start. Number six, about you. Yes, this is obvious, but be sure to include an about you. People want to know, like, and trust you. And how can they do that if they don't know anything about you? But you don't need to share every single detail of your life. Decide what what you want to be public knowledge. Do you want people to know where you live? This may be important depending on the services you offer. Uh, Again, I've had a few inquiries that were purely location-based, like the one I mentioned to you. Or do you want to keep it off the radar? You totally can. Post your resume. Yes, you need some social proof on why someone should work with you and add a downloadable resume to your about page. So it can be as simple as a button that links directly to your PDF resume. That's what I have. I have a short biography and then a button for my resume. Number seven, endorsements if you have them. So if you have them, use them. This is additional social proof. So people, whether they know them or not, will put a lot of weight into what someone else says. So I don't have endorsements on my websites because all of my clients come to me through referrals. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever taken on a client who's come to me through my website. And I know I'm like defeating this whole show, but they still have gone to look at my website and people I know actually have gone to look at my website to see the services that I offer and then to contact me. But they are still people I know. So I don't really worry about endorsements because I don't need them. 
But people want to hear what other people have to say. So if you have endorsements, put them on your website. Or if you've just created this excellent reputation, you're good to go. All right, so now let's get started on your website. Here are your next steps. Download the Mom Boss 2.0 workbook to take a deeper dive into everything mentioned above. Now, the workbook is not specifically about websites, but it's going to help you clarify your messaging, your services that you want to offer, who your ideal client is. And no, I don't do avatars. I'm sorry. I know this is the popular way of doing things, but I think it's stupid. Okay, <clears throat> I said it. Moving on. Next step is get your hosting and your domain. And then go check out the playlist to start building your website. And link is below. Next, or actually I just mentioned that. So go through the step-by-step -step guide on building a website. And there's so much uh, that I've created on how to do it. Like you can watch the videos and then get started. Watch the Divi Tips playlist once again. So I have a playlist that is step-by-step -step on how to build the website. So that is going to be more in-depth. That's going to show you how to use different things um, more in-depth. Like you actually, I build a website with you. And then I have Divi Tips, which is kind, which is more of addressing different concerns that, or the most common roadblocks that beginners encounter. So those are just topics, like um, random topics that you can just look up if, you're ha if you ran run into any trouble. And finally, go read this post or watch the show or listen to uh, the podcast on prepare before you take the leap. So again, because I'm very practical and I like practicality, go step by step through what you need to do before you actually take the leap into your virtual assistant business. So moms, I am so glad you joined me today. And if you want to help spread the word, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember to check out the Life Unbox store for all of your mom boss merch. And I have homeschool resources there too. You can support the show with coffee. Visit Kofi, that's K-O hyphen F-I dot com forward slash Life Unbox blog to buy this tired mama a cup of joe. For more great mompreneur content, follow Life Unbox on social media or check out lifeunbox.blog. And be sure to share the podcast and video with your friends because it really does help. And I will see you in the next show. Oh, 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 o